Charlie. No. I need to pick something. Charlie. Hello, madam. No. You probably only have to watch like two or three videos on my channel before I preach about how easy Charlie is when it comes to my everyday with her. And first of all, I'm sorry. I really don't hope it comes across as like me bragging or some selfish kind of thing. It, I, it's really not like that. I'm just very proud of Charlie and the work that I've done with her. So I of course want to share what I've done so that others can benefit from it as well. Some of it is due to Charlie's species because to a certain degree, like every parrot species will have different needs. So yes, Charlie is easier than a macaw because she doesn't require the same amount of space and maybe not the same amount of attention. And that's why I chose the species. However, I still think that there are a lot of like routines and training methods that you can apply to every parrot to make your life a whole lot easier and also to some degree easier for your parrot. I have at least experienced that I get a whole bunch of more freedom having Charlie on these routines and I've mentioned some of them in my other videos. I actually have a whole tips to get a more calm and confident bird that I made a pretty long time ago. <laughs> but that's also a good video and I will cover some of the same points but I have sort of added some new ones or hopefully I will also just explain these in a bit of a different way so that you can hopefully also get more freedom with your bird. Ginormous disclaimer before I begin, Charlie is by no means perfect. Trust me, <laughs> she has her days and she has her weeks where things aren't easy. And I'm not saying these tips will fit into everyone's lifestyle or have the same effect on their bird as it has on Charlie. So even though I'm sharing what has worked for us, remember to think about like what your bird needs and the pace your bird works best at because that's really essential when trying to train these things. Let's run through a day and start out with the morning because not letting your bird out right away in the morning or right away when you get home can actually be pretty beneficial. We should of course let our birds come out and get some exercise or at least provide them with the opportunity to do so. However, I have noticed that a lot of people come out and, or wake up and first thing they do is go and take their bird out of the cage. And this can lead to a bird that expects you to let them out whenever you get home from work or you wake up in the morning. So whenever your bird wakes up, it wants to be let out, so it screams for you. Or you come home from work and your bird will scream until you let them out. That's where I'm at. If you're anything like me and seriously have to go to the bathroom whenever you get home from school or work, then I think it's at least so nice to not get inside the door and then have Charlie scream for me to let her out while I have to go to the toilet. Instead, try and make it unpredictable for your bird whenever you let them out. Because by coming home and letting them out, you're creating this expectation or behavior where your bird really wants to be let out or knows that it can be let out whenever you get home. If you instead go to the bathroom or you make some lunch or something like that before letting them out, then you're creating an, an unpredictable pattern. By applying this to your morning routine as well, you can also have a bird that might let you sleep in for longer, so to say. Because Charlie has picked up that whenever it's school morning, I get up early and Charlie is so tired that she don't even want me to come interact with her or open the cage or anything. She just wants her breakfast. So I give her that and I actually don't let Charlie out on school mornings. Then when it's weekend, I can sleep in until 11 p.m. a.m. Shit, clock system. <laughs> I can sleep in until 11 a.m. <laughs> and then Charlie has actually picked up that whenever we start talking or making noise, maybe me watching something on my phone, she will scream for me in the mornings. But like she's let me sleep in until 11 a.m. So I'm actually completely fine with that. And then she just chills. If I wanted to sleep for longer, I could go out and get her, put her in the perch in the bedroom and she would be fine as well. But it's just this with not letting them out first thing won't give you a bird that expects it and wants to scream for you. So it can be more on your terms when your bird is let out instead of having it be on their terms. So exactly when you get home and exactly when they wake up, they need to get out. You get more control and a parrot that will respect that it's your time instead of their time. 
So have you ever been invited to something but didn't go because you were afraid that your bird would be distressed if you were out for too long or it expects you to be home at a certain time? Because implementing a really good leaving routine, and I would actually say with no schedule, really gives you peace of mind when out. It's not too long ago that I made my leaving routine video, so you can go and watch that if you're very interested in how it works in depth. But the key point to take away is say it with me, leave when you have to. <laughs> What I mean by leave if you have to is be realistic and know that you're gonna have to go out sometimes. And it could be going for groceries for 10 minutes. It could be leaving for three hours. It could be that birthday party that I always talk about. <laughs> It could be a lot of things. And so not having your bird on a schedule where you go out at a certain time, come home at a certain time every single day without having these intervals where you just leave for a short amount of time or days where you leave for not so many hours as a work day, but still leave for some hours will make your bird not expect. Again, it's about this expecting thing. It will make your bird not be able to predict how many hours you're out every single day. And that's really beneficial, believe it or not. Also clearly communicating to them when you are leaving. Again, you can watch the leaving routine video if you want to know how to do that. But clearly communicating that to them lets them know that you're leaving, screaming for me won't help, so don't do that. I'll be back, you don't know when, but just stay in your cage and wait for me. And if your bird is used to that, they'll probably do it. Being a bit longer after school or work, no problem because your bird don't expect you to be home. Going out with your friends, no problem because your bird is out home stress-free. Being delayed because you're stuck on the highway for three hours with your sister and her boyfriend because of a flat tire, no problem, but very inconvenient. <laughs> Still, of course, do be mindful of how long you leave, and I do talk about this, but I like to think about it as a dog. Leave for like maybe 10 to 12 hours, and that's stretching it a bit, obviously, but I don't expect someone to be away 10 or 12 hours every single day. Don't leave your bird for too long, but just having them on a routine where it's changing up, when, where they don't expect you to be home at a certain time, can really give you freedom. It's also important that you don't just do this immediately. You need to train accordingly with your bird for them to not be totally stressed out all of a sudden if they're used to something else. But this also kind of answers, can you have a parrot and a full-time job? Or can you have a parrot and go to university? You can, but you just need to condition your bird to that routine or that schedule that you might have. And if it's a changing one, it's even better. The next one is a favorite of mine, and that is take them with you everywhere and even outside. This one does require some desensitization training and actually a lot of it, but I'm telling you the reward that you get out of it is all worth it. Taking Charlie with me to events, to my parents, to Christmases, to birthdays, to school has been so fun. And I think for both of us, because I think Charlie would rather come with me than sitting in her cage being home alone, even though I just talked about how that's okay and how you can train it, but you know what I mean. <laughs> oh my God, the amount of time and stress it saves me to just pack up Charlie and take her with me whenever I'm going somewhere instead of having to finding a pet sitter and pay them and arrange all sorts of things whenever I'm away for more than a day. It has been so nice. The problematic part for a lot of birds, however, is that it is super stressful as a bird to be taking away from your cage and going all of these different places and it can be a lot of stimuli to take in. However, this is where we need to come in as owners and try and train them and teach them that it's fine to be taking all these places and get them used to a world where we do that. So how do you start? Well, you can start by watching my video on it. And then it's really all about taking your bird outside little by little. And you might be thinking, why the hell would I take them outside if I don't plan on free flying or even harness train or is just not interested in bringing them outside? I am so glad you asked because bringing them outside is not only really good for them health-wise, but it's probably the best way to introduce them to a lot of unpredictable environments and sounds and people and a whole lot of other things. And even doing so from a backpack, not taking them out in harness or anything, but a backpack or a cage, 
is so beneficial and totally fine. If you then build onto this training and just end up with a bird that's pretty much desensitized to being outside, then I promise you, you will end up with a bird that just adjusts so quickly to new settings and can be in so many different environments being inside or outside. Not to mention that should the unfortunate happen and your bird escapes outside, then your chances of retrieving them is increased by a landmark, I'm telling you. Because now your bird is somewhat used to what's going on out there and won't be so overstimulated that they can't think about anything else than just panic fly away. What this means for our everyday is that I can take Charlie with me almost anywhere, like my parents, like the car, anywhere, and Charlie will be so chill in every environment. She will sleep sometimes, which I'll elaborate on later. She might destroy some stuff and do bird things, right? I wasn't really sure if I should add this, but I think a really good addition to this is that finding a really good quality travel cage can make visits and going places so much easier than you might think. I recently invested in a really good Montana travel cage and I'm not sponsored, but I have not regretted my decision whatsoever. I don't do much transportation off Charlie in it because for that I use her backpack. She's way more comfortable in it. But what we do is that I just have, the, have this cage in the car and whenever we go places, be my parents or something, I have a cage for Charlie to be in and sleep in or if I need to put her away when we eat or anything, Charlie will happily go inside her travel cage where she has an, a food and water bowl and I can put some toys and basically have a little mini cage for her. I will also add that having this locking system with the bowls has been a lifesaver because Charlie found out that if she's unhappy with her food, she can just take her bowl out of the little holder and throw it on the floor and I come and clean it up and it's super funny. So I think it's important for me to mention that even though I do take Charlie a lot of places like my parents or boyfriend or whatever, I still do have a cage for her that I put her in if I maybe have to do grocery shopping when I'm at my parents or if we go out to eat or anything like that. So it's not just taking your parrot with you somewhere, it's also preparing for when you do so. And I know it might sound like a no brainer, right? Have a travel cage. But still, having one of good quality that's easily portable should not be underrated. Next up is introducing them to other people or train accordingly. And this is the part where I want to mention that if you have a baby bird, it is so much easier to implement all of these routines and training tips than with an adult bird. And this is because animals are very good at picking up habits, but what becomes difficult is changing habits. It requires a very high cognitive skill. And parrots do have that, but it's still a very hard process for them to go through. So baby bird owners, if you have a baby bird, get them on a routine that fits your schedule the best and you won't regret it because if you start babying them, so to say, and being around them 24 seven and they then grow up and you realize you wanna do something else, it's gonna be way more difficult. People introduction can be very tricky because not all people are gonna handle your bird the same and not all people are gonna do it the same every single time. So your bird has to learn that people they meet are gonna react and handle them very differently and be okay with that. Kids can be an excellent example because despite us maybe trying to tell a kid how to hold a parrot, they might not do it the exact way we had imagined and that's just how kids are, it's not on them at all. But this means that Shelly, for example, has been very used to kids holding her like this, with an arm down like this, or maybe retracting their arm all of a sudden and having to react to that. I've also had a lot of kids and adults actually just touch Shelly without asking me, so they, they might be allowed to hold her and then they'll try and pet her. She doesn't really like that, but thankfully, Charlie is not one of those parrots that bite if she doesn't like that. She'll just send me a very uncomfortable look asking me to take her back, basically. <laughs> and it's not just people that we meet on the street, because I know that that's not a situation a lot of parrots are put in, but people like family members or a pet that are coming over to say hello to your bird. It can be so beneficial having a bird that gets along with them. And training it, as mentioned, it can be tricky also because one bad experience experience with a stranger can make a bird very skittish to watch them for maybe the rest of their life or makes it so that they require a whole lot of more training. What I would start doing is maybe just let a stranger 
do a little training session with your bird. So depending on how much your bird hates all like strangers, they could start just do a little training, build up some trust. But if you're at a point where your bird maybe really just hates other people and you can't ensure the safety of your stranger, then it's probably a good idea to just have them present and then treat your bird through the cage bars so that they associate a stranger with treats. And then you can, when it's safe, <laughs> move on to them treating your bird and doing some tricks. Then if you want to build on it even further, you can have other strangers come in and start working with your bird so that maybe if you're lucky, your bird will start to just associate people that they don't know or people that aren't used to coming in here just be a good thing. <laughs> you are so cuddly, Jelly. You're so cute. You are. You're so cute. Yes, you are. Oh my God, you have so many pin feathers. You are molting like crazy. You're molting like crazy. Yes, you are. And you want the microphone. It's not gonna happen. The moral of the story is that the more people you introduce your bird to and the earlier you do it, the better and the more people your bird will probably be used to. If you then on the other hand get a baby bird and keep it indoors for the first year or two of its life because you really like your baby bird and you don't want anything to happen to it, then you might end up with a one person bird because you're the only person that it's known. Many might also know this, but I just want to add that it's really important that you only pet your bird on the head or in the head region because the back and belly and tail are reserved for their mate. So if you as the owner start petting your bird on the back in all these places, you might end up with a bird that thinks of you as their mate and therefore will be more aggressive towards strangers getting in contact with you or trying to get near the bird when you're nearby. So please only keep scratching to the head and don't pet your bird on the back because then you will end up being its mate. Congrats on the marriage though. Now we get to my very last advice, which is do not give your bird a bedtime or even cover their cage at night. I know that a lot of people do this and if it works for you, it totally works for you and I'm not gonna say that you don't have to do it or anything. But my viewpoint on the matter is that I think covering your bird's cage and giving them a bedtime can actually higher the risks of you getting a bird that first of all is very sleep sensitive and second of all might get a bird that don't want to step up in the evening or don't really want to interact with you in the evening because it knows that you're just going to put it to bed and it might not want to do that yet. What I mean by sleep sensitive is that if you cover up your bird at night and make as little noise as possible, then you might have a bird that actually can't really sleep in any other conditions. So it needs to be pitch black and there needs to be absolutely zero noise. But we might end up in a situation where there's just noise from sources that we can't control outside and your bird now can't sleep or it gets more night frights. Think about it a bit like a baby. I know parrots are parrots and obviously not babies, even though the intelligence level is almost there. But if you think about it like a baby, I remember my parents always saying that they made it a big deal to just speak normally and walk around normally whenever we were babies and had to go to sleep instead of this like walking around slowly whispering because the baby is sleeping and all of these things and you know what we were such good sleepers we could sleep anywhere and we could sleep in any noise and that is basically desensitization of babies <laughs> I've generally not really been a fan of cage covering because it does create a really black space. And in nature, there would always be some sort of light source. Some nights might be pitch black, but not only light source, there would be noise, there would be wind, there would be all these things. So a parrot is not naturally built to sleep in pitch black, all silence. They can sleep like with noise and with some light source. Furthermore, we always make it a bit priori big priority in a hormone season to not give them a dark place because they can start building a nest. Yet, we cover their cage, making basically a huge nest for them. And I noticed this while I tried covering Charlie's cage because just when we moved in, she did have a lot of night frights. So I thought by covering her cage, it might help. It did not. She not only got more night frights, but I also noticed that she got so cage territorial, even when the cover wasn't on. So I just think Charlie started to associate her cage more with like a big nest. So that's why I'm really not a fan of cage covering. If it works for you and your bird is used to it, by all means, roll, roll with it. But 
I'm not gonna do it and this is my perspective on it and why I think that if you get a baby bird really consider if you want to cover their cage and make them used to sleeping in a pitch black space with zero noise because if you don't, you might end up with a bird like Charlie that actually goes to bed all by herself. I did mention this quickly in my other video and I can totally see why it would cause concern for some people that I just let Charlie go to bed by herself. But I promise you, I have not noticed Charlie missing sleep at any point. And what I do is basically just let the cage be open all evening. Charlie can go in there whenever she wants. And she usually does around like seven or eight. So that's fine time. She gets her 12 hours. And that's while me and Michael are out here playing video games, talking, there's light on. We are making noise basically. Charlie doesn't care. The cage is not covered or anything. She walks in there, she sleeps. I think my logic behind doing it this way with Charlie was that I trust Charlie to go to bed if she's tired because in nature they wouldn't have the adult bird come and tell them that now is bedtime and then cover them up so it's all dark and make absolutely no noise at all. Again, we have the wind, we have the trees, we have other animals making noises. So it wouldn't be natural and I don't think it's necessary for it to be that quiet and dark if they're used to it, I will add. Where it becomes very practical for Charlie to sleep this way is that if I'm at my parents again, then I don't have to ensure that a whole household is quiet or remember her cage cover for the cage. I can just put her anywhere I want. It can even be in her harness on my shoulder and Charlie will sleep when she's tired. That actually does conclude the tips that I had, but I still wanna clarify something because listening to this, some people might think that it's way too loose of a way to have a bird, so to say, with almost no schedule at all. I do believe that I take care of Charlie to the best of my ability to ensure that she's healthy. The thing about these routines is that I do not want to baby Charlie too much. She is an animal and I think a lot of pet parents fall into the trap of babying their animals to the point where they don't get to experience anything new, they don't get to be challenged mentally by be put into new situations and, and all of this. So by having Charlie on these things, I suddenly give her a life where she needs to get used to that things change. Because yeah, sure, if I could for all the 30 plus years that Charlie live ensure that nothing is gonna change, have her on schedules and routines, but it's not really realistic. Now, if I noticed that having these schedules and routines would hurt Charlie down the line, then I would of course stop doing them or do something different. But as of now, I think Charlie would be more confused that I, if I put her on a schedule than not being on one. And it benefits me to be able to sleep for longer and come home whenever I want to and all these things that I've gone through, obviously. So why change it? And Charlie thrives, I thrive, but I will say I've done these things with her since she was a little chick, since I had her from day one, which is why she's so used to it and doesn't really have a problem with it. If I were to raise Charlie on a certain routine where I worry about her every move, then she can't go on to people because they don't handle her 100% correctly. And she can't go outside because she'll die from diseases instantly. And yes, that is an argument that I've heard for, from people not wanting to take their bird outside. Then if something were to happen, if something were to change, it would scare the crap out of Charlie. Let's say that I have an accident and now a stranger has to come in and take care of Charlie and she can't be cage covered in the night and there would be more noise, she would maybe have to be moved somewhere else, then Charlie is so much better prepared if I have trained these things with her and she is somewhat used to change. At my new vet school, they have actually changed things up a bit from the other vet school and have started teaching us in animal behavior and training, which is so freaking cool that they're actually taking the time to teach us that because things like stress and fear is very important as a veterinarian and we're learning how to train animals to be better at handling stressful situations. So we have also had a desensitization course where we have actually learned four different types of desensitization, also called gradual habituation. So I would absolutely love to make a video talking about different ways to desensitize your bird so that you may find a, a way that fits your bird very well so that you can implement these routines and train them. 
So I will definitely make a video on, on how to start desensitizing so that your bird can start doing these things. Because I don't want anyone to think that these are things where you can just go from zero to 100 and change up your bird's schedule in a heartbeat, because that will definitely stress your bird. So if you have a baby, start doing these things from the start. That's my best advice, because that way it will be stress-free for the bird and they will get used to it very fast. If you have a bird that's already on a routine, you need to start think about, to think about desensitization and training and how you're gonna implement these things slowly. I already have my leaving video on it if you want the leaving routine and I have my take your bird outside video if you wanna learn how to do that. But I really wanna talk about desensitization and the different ways to do it so that people can do it more and actually get their bird out on these routines and get more freedom.